Hi, my name is Michael Ostroff and I'm a PhD student at FAU. I am I'm here today to talk to you about a type of info hazard um, which are called prophetic hazards which can be hypothetically created by closed time-like curves. So I believe that our universe is a sort of mathematical structure, a function to be specific. So in this idea, space-time is essentially a function which you can plug in um, various coordinates and you get an output which is the value of space-time at a point. And with a lot of functions, um, including space-time I believe, you can analytically continue it um, uh, as it abides by some sort of PDE. And if you were to go and do this into a circle, um, like if it were to become multi-valued and didn't return to like the exact same value, then that would mean I would have a branch discontinuity. A good function is single valued, which means if you plug a like coordinate into it, you only get like one output for the value of space time. And if you were to have a um, system which, or, or if you, if you had a function which was single valued everywhere, um, then that would mean it would have like no branch discontinuities and it would be entire meromorphic. And I believe that our like reality is like such a system. I believe that our mathematical reality has none of these problematic branch cuts um, and, or, or like branch discontinuities and therefore that the past evolution of space-time and therefore the analytic continuation of space-time should be past independent. This means that if you were to essentially go into a circle, you would return to your starting point. So if this were to be the case, then if you were to travel backwards in time, you would be incapable of um, changing like the timeline and doing anything which didn't already happen in the first place. This doesn't rule out um, time travel. This only rules out self-inconsistent time travel like the grandfather paradox, but bootstrap paradoxes are still allowed if you're preventing any like, if um, time travel must be self-consistent, bootstrap paradoxes are still allowed. So this leads to a um, thought experiment that I came up with. So imagine you have a room and in this room there is a television screen and a camera. When someone walks oh, in this um, camera, it's connected to the television screen such that whatever the camera sees is then displayed to the, cam to the TV. A weird thing about this thought experiment is that the signal from the camera is not going to the TV in the present, it's actually sending it into the past. So if someone were to be, if someone were inside the room, they would be able to see what would be going on in the room one minute in the future. They would gain knowledge of the room's future, essentially. So if someone were to, um, walk into the room and they saw themselves doing something in the future, they would not have any capacity to do anything other than what they're seeing themselves do. Let's do a little bit of a thought experiment right now involving time travel. Let's say we have this room and in this room is a television and a camera. This camera is filming what is going on inside the room and it's sending that feed like that information over to the television. However, it's not sending it to the television at like that same moment. It's sending it backwards in time by one minute. And as a result, anyone who is inside of this room is able to see what is going on inside this room like one minute into the future. So let's say there's a door here and someone is told like that there is this um, like room with like this like closed time like curve in it. So like information from the like future is coming to the past. Um, so this person like walks in and they have the mindset that they'll do um, that if they see themselves doing something on the screen then they'll do it within reason and this person they walk into the room they look up at the screen and they see themselves um listening to music on their phone and dancing and so they think you know that seems harmless enough i'm actually just going to go do that and so then they listen to music on their phone and they start dancing and they are all fine and happy and everything's perfectly fine and then that person ends up leaving the room and let's say another person is then going to go and enter this room and this person has a very different mindset they think that they're going to go and do the opposite of what they see themselves doing on the screen and create a time paradox essentially. It's essentially like they're hoping to create like a grandfather paradox. 
So when they walk into the room, they look at the screen, and then they see themselves doing something which they can't control. They see themselves like flailing on the ground, having some sort of seizure essentially. And when they see this on the screen, it triggers a cascade of neuronal activity in their brain, which then initiates that seizure. And, be, and this, um, the reason that this happened, instead of something a lot like um, more harmless, like was the other person, was because they, um, the close time like curve in this room, it's sort of suppressing their ability to like do like things which are inconsistent with what's what's going on on the television essentially, and because this person um, like because they went into this with the mindset that they were going to do the opposite of what they saw on the TV, um, essentially this suppressed their free will such that, like so much, to such a degree, that they did not have the free will to actually decide any of their future actions. And so that's why um, they essentially start having a seizure on the floor. So this is essentially what I refer to as a prophetic hazard. and. It's a sort of info hazard that a closed time-like curve in a um, self-consistent universe, um, like time travel-wise, should um, create. Now, um, if you were to instead um, have like painted over the television um, before that individual came in, then when they like walked in and looked at the television, it would just be black. They wouldn't really be able to gain any information about their like future actions um, from that like um, black television, essentially. But information from the future, it's still like traveling into the television screen. It's still being like um, emitted from the LEDs. It's then just like hitting the black paint and getting converted into infrared radiation. And this infrared radiation, which does contain information about this person's future actions, it's still hitting them and. But because they can't see infrared radiation, um, they are not able to discern any information about their future actions and their ability to um, do something which like, would create like a grandfather paradox, or at least like attempt to do so, is greatly diminished. Such that they just look at the screen, um, which looks completely like black to them, they, um, and they just are able to walk out of the room completely unharmed. So, Closed time like curves in and of themselves, like they should not inherently create a like they shouldn't create prophetic hazards, but under the right conditions, if you're able to get coherent information about the future from them, like specifically about your future actions, then you are your free will to do anything other than those event like actions is suppressed. Now, it's possible you could have someone who walks into the room and they aren't really told about um, what's going on on the television, but they, um, so let's say they're told that the images which are being displayed on the television is essentially just like some deep fake being like automatically generated by some sort of AI. This person then walks into the room with no, um, like ideas to like go and do what they see on the TV or do the opposite of what they see on the TV. And so when they go in, they'll just like, they don't really have the ability to do the opposite of what they see on the TV, but they'll probably like um, not try to resist doing what they see. Okay, so you can imagine like two different um, scenarios to start. One where um, they're like, there's like a prophet and um, they go and tell the truth but like the person they're telling it like it to like about the future they aren't really listen they don't like think the prophet's legit and so they basically just ignore them go about their life regardless of whatever the prophet says and um there's another scenario when the prophet is not legit and they're basically lying and the person doesn't really um put any weight on what, to what the prophet says so in both cases like there is like no effect on that person's life essentially um like we're like depending on whatever like the, this like prophet says but if that person does believe what that prophet says then if you are in a prophetically hazardous space time um it would be best to ignore to just like um, assume that any information you're receiving which is allegedly uh, like uh, about your future is not accurate and to not like act on it because by being willing to act on it you 
will alter the like subset of possible um, future realities in a way which like prophetic hazards could emerge and start to harm you. Um, however, if you like don't act on any like knowledge you might be receiving from the space time or from the future, then it's essentially like you've taken like black paint and painted over that television and you like there's close time there's a close time like curve and you are getting information about your future but it's not in a way which is actually going to be prophetically hazardous so this room the one with this close time like curve it's a prophetically hazardous space time because of these like um, free will suppressing like prophetic hazards so if you were in a um, prophetically hazardous space time i would suggest you don't really believe anything you are told about your own future. You just assume that it's false and if you were to do that and you like um, disregard that like future knowledge which could be prophetically hazardous then what you're essentially doing is taking a bucket of black paint and you're painting over that television screen so the closed time like curves are still there but you're essentially nullifying the like prophetic hazards um, if you do take the information from the your future seriously um, then that will alter um, the subset of possible features which you could find yourself in, potentially for the worse. Because the dynamics of prophetically hazardous space times are likely very different from the dynamics of like non-prophetically hazardous space times. So it's best to like try to it's best to try to avoid. Um, prophetic hazards if you can and like minimize their effects so if you were to ever to come across any prophets just don't listen to them or don't believe them um so this weirdly enough this might actually have applications regarding um fundamental physics weirdly enough this stuff about prophetic hazards it might actually be relevant to um quantum physics to some extent because I was like thinking about the like Pauli's exclusion principle and like Kerr black holes and I realized that there was like an interesting connection specifically Kerr Newman black holes so I realized that there is a potential application or relevancy of these prophetic hazards when it comes to quantum mechanics specifically regarding the Pauli exclusion principle and Kerr Newman black holes so if you know about like Kerr Newman black holes, they essentially have this ring singularity at the center of them, which is threaded by an electromagnetic field. So if you were looking at a negatively charged Kerr Newman black hole, it would um, essentially be like this, and the electric field lines would be pointing inside of the like ring singularity. Um, and what this is over here, um, the circular region, this is actually this um, a wormhole which leads to another Kerr Newman black hole. Um, and that the Kerr Newman black hole that it leads to, if you were to like go through this wormhole, you would see it um, being a Kerr Newman black hole of equal and opposite charge. Oh, okay, so this these black hole electrons, they're essentially um, Kerr Newman black holes with the same like mass and um, charge and angular momentum as um, electrons have. And these um, like black hole electrons, they're actually, they have naked singularity. So this like um, regularity and this like wormhole region, they're actually exposed. So they're not behind, like they're not shielded by any event horizons. And if the electrons are these like such like um, soliton, like gravi gravitational solitons like this, they probably aren't going to look exactly like this, but it's a close enough analog for this discussion. So I'm thinking that the Pauli's, exclu Pauli's exclusion principle works as follows. If you, let's say you have an electron and it's entangled with another electron um, in an ER equals EPR way, which means that there's a, like this wormhole is, um, Okay, so this electron um, is connected to that other electron via these like wormholes and like entanglement works via wormholes. Basically, um, because when you uh, go through this like um, wormhole, um, this like regularity, and you come out of the other um, like black holes wormhole and you notice it has an opposite charge, you know that um, 
there's this thing called like um, charge like parity symmetry um, or charge time parity symmetry CPP and if you were to um, take an electron and you were to flip it in its like time orientation it was its charge would flip as well and if you were to flip it in its spatial orientation by mirroring it in space it would its charge would also change as well so because you're coming out of what appears to be a positron to you but it's actually electron you know that you're either being flipped in the direction of time or you're being flipped in the direction of space and if you're being flipped in the direction of space then causally speaking everything's like perfectly fine um but you're kind of like made out of like antimatter now um that part may, might, might not be so fine but like causally speaking everything's okay it's essentially a non-orientable wormhole um however if you're getting flipped in time instead then what would happen is um you the like this sort of system regarding these two electrons this is what i ref would refer to as a u-turn metric because you're you can essentially go forwards in time um go through the wormhole and then come out um having done a u-turn through time and then like start traveling into the past and when this happens um it starts creating a bunch of these closed time like curves and because you because you're like able to like um change your like orientation in time you're able to travel into your own past and so you in theory could like essentially go through another u-turn uh, metric down here like in the past and start going forwards in time again and come back to your original starting point and so there are like definitely close time like curves present and my thought is that maybe reality might try to prevent like such a thing from occurring and it would be able to do this by um making these like um black hole making these black hole electrons when they're in this configuration um repel each other um or either like not get close enough that this entanglement happens in the first place so if they were to repel each other, then both of these electrons would start to accelerate um, farther and farther away from each other. Um, and that would keep the um, close time like curves from getting, getting created essentially. The idea is essentially if the universe wants to prevent the creation of prophetic hazards, then it would essentially be exerting these like anti-prophetic forces on electrons such that they do not get entangled in a way which creates said prophetic hazards. And I'm wondering if, um, like two electrons sharing the same quantum state would inherently create like um have them become entangled in such a way which creates like those prophetic hazards and maybe if they are like um not in the same quantum state if it would then um just switch the like spatial orientation and not create any closed time like curves so essentially like to recap this video so far, if you have a self like consistent, if you have self consistent time travel, then you get this type of info hazard known as prophetic hazards, um, which like are created by closed time like curves under certain conditions. And the universe might want to prevent the like creation of these prophetic hazards or like closed time like curves. Um, which could potentially be created when two electrons in the same state become entangled. And it does this, like it prevents this creation using um, what, what I've been referring to as like anti-prophetic forces because they prevent the formation of prophetic hazards. 